This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Week one of the NFL preseason, a full slate of games coming up this weekend with games beginning on Thursday. So it's time to talk some NFL preseason betting and get you set for those games by talking to Joe Ostrowski at BetQL Daily at 670 the score, getting his read on how to bet preseason games and what bets he likes for this week. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com, joined here by my host every Wednesday. Dr. Ed Fang, you of course know Ed from all our time here at Covering the Spread. Ed will be with us every Wednesday here talking NFL, college football, World Cup, whatever it may be. Ed, it is a delight to have you back on the show for today. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Uh, excited to, uh, to, to be more of the college football guy on this podcast. A little bit of a change from uh, the past couple seasons. Uh, not really, but... but um, <laughs> um, and then, yeah, looking forward to uh, talking to some NFL today. Absolutely. We're going to do exactly that with Joe Ostrowski. You can find him on Twitter at Joe Ostrowski. Joe, I'm still adjusting to your new Twitter handle, so apologies on that. But at Joe Ostrowski, Joe O is Joe O670 is gone, gone forever, yes. but he lives on forever in our hearts. You can find Joe on Twitter at Joe Ostrowski. Check him out at BeckQL Daily and 670 the score. Joe, happy NFL season. I think I can say that to you now. How are you doing today? I thought I simplified things for you just by going to my actual name. <laughs> but I like Joe 067. It was a long process. I had to go, I was going back and forth with Twitter, Twitter forever. And uh, yeah, I finally got, I got the job done there. But, but like, now you're I telling me, you're throwing me for a loop. It's more challenging for a Jim Sonis. But like, I, I could just call you Joe O. Like, it was so easy. You like, can. I know there was more just, to the Twitter handle, but like, you were just Joe O. And now you're, you're professional. You've gone big league on us. <laughs> yes, I'm Irish as well. You yeah. can still call me Joe O. It's okay. You could still do okay. that. It's That's so reassuring to me. Um, I appreciate that for sure. And what we're going to do today is talk about some NFL preseason because, Joe, I'm not good at it. And so I got to get some expertise from someone else about how to bet NFL preseason games because it's not a it's not a strength for me. I would like to be better at it. So we're going to pick your brain about betting NFL preseason games and talk about some week one games. But I think more importantly, let's talk about this from a broad perspective. We can, you know try to apply this to not just week one, but week two and week three as well. It seems as though betting preseason is very much an information-based game. You know, you want to have the intel, you want to have as much info as possible. So I want to ask you, when you're betting preseason games, what resources are you using to track down the information you need to not be a bad better? It is information based and the information in the Hall of Fame game was Josh McDaniels is going home. So you just bet on Josh McDaniels, right? He's at his <laughs> high school stadium. You've got to bet Josh McDaniels. And, and they actually, they look, the Raiders look pretty good in that game. Uh, it, it is. And people say that it's information based and I get what they're saying. You should actually pay attention to the beat writers, but you should always be doing a lot of that. I think uh, what you, what you can actually do, which would, uh, which is something I would suggest not doing throughout the regular season is listening to the head coaches because they lie for a living during the regular season. But the majority of the time, they're actually being straight up with you on which guys are going to get playing time. So you can figure out the quarterback rotations, how many series a veteran quarterback, if at all, is going to be on the field. So that that's legitimate, but you can also pick up things like the uh, the new head coach down in Miami, Mike McDaniel. The other day he mentioned he's like, yeah, there's not much value to the preseason. So what is his approach going to be? But he backed that up by saying we're going to try and, and figure things out with the back end of the roster. It's not information based like draft. I, I feel like that's become a big buzzword because over the last year, no matter what draft you're talking about, if you are paying attention at all, if you have a pulse, if you're searching Twitter, like you you've been cashing some monster tickets. Trayvon Walker was 30 to one two weeks before the NFL draft. Paolo Bancaro, the weekend before the NBA draft, he was 22 to one to be the number one overall pick yeah. uh, during during the Stanley cup final on BetQL daily. We had an NHL guest and we had a couple minutes at the end. And I, and I noticed in his bio, I'm like, Oh, this guy does NHL draft stuff. And the only market you could find was uh, the, the number one overall pick. I'm like, Oh, so this is done, huh? Because it, it says the favorites minus 5,000. He was like, no, I'm hearing Slavkovsky is going to be the pick. And he was 15 to one at that time and he ends up being the number one pick 
wow. uh, at the MLB draft <clears throat> one hour before uh, before it started. I was hearing that Matt Holiday was telling people his son's going number one overall, and he was ten to one an hour before the draft, and he ends up being. No, so it's not information based like the drafts that have been right. quite well, profitable, all of them. But it is information that, you know, hey, hey, we can get some intel on which players are going to be out there and how much they're going to be out there. For sure, Joe. I mean, I feel like with the drafts, it's it's the information leads it directly to a result. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if, if you knew, I mean, a lot of people knew Trayvon Walker was going to be the first pick a week ahead of time. And uh, I was fortunate enough to to get on on that. But I just feel like with these preseason games, it's like you have information, but then you got you got to throw on you know the entire randomness that comes with playing a football game, right? Yep. So it's it's kind of I don't know I don't know if you can quantify whether it's like fifty percent information and fifty percent randomness of football, but that's probably the big difference that you're talking about, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. Like, okay, I can tell you which players are going to be on the field, but we also have a turnover luck we talk about all the times and short fields and totals in the low 30s and, right. and guys that are going to be fighting for jobs and and some quarterbacks perform well on the script i watched that with mitchell trubisky in his time in chicago yeah. and apparently he's having a horrible training camp in pittsburgh or is that just going against one of the top defenses every single day like, there are all sorts of variables that are thrown in the wash with that and uh there are different approaches by a, a number of head coaches. So it, sometimes you hear information based. Yes, a little bit. You have an idea of what's going to happen, but I, I don't think we quite know. And trends that people refer to time and time again, they will flip on a dime. And, and sure. I don't, I'm not sure that it's lazy, but it is. And I know you guys want to talk about this, that it is talked about more than anything I, and and that's the head coaches right jim yeah so let's talk about that i mean i think yeah. that you were talking about the trends being flipped i think that one example of that is you look at preseason like betting trends in the past couple of years unders were cra cra cashing at a crazy crazy rate so everyone on twitter is like oh man unders always cash in the preseason but then you look at the totals for this year and they're like two or three points lower than they mm -hmm. were and like you gotta account for that stuff but i think the coaching part I am more receptive to that because that's an actual philosophical thing. So we hear about, you know, about Harbaugh. We hear about Pete Carroll, I think is a guy who like gets, it gets labeled as being someone who cares about the preseason. Do you care about those numbers, Joe? Or is that just something the books account for? And we have to navigate around that. Something else that's been in the news the last couple of days. And I just started to think about this with these low totals. And in that hall of fame game, it was, it was in the high twenties at one point. And, and it goes over, I believe the final possession of the game. So yeah. this is, this is something that, I mean, man, are, are some of these really low totals and there are some that have dipped a field goal three and a half. And there are some that, that have spiked a little bit. Uh, I, I, something I find very amusing and I know nobody, plan this out but the the coaches that get talked up you mentioned Pete Carroll he's one of them mm -hmm. uh Mike Tomlin's another one so Pete Carroll he's 64 percent against the spread in his career in the preseason Mike Tomlin last four preseasons he's 12 and four three and one every year uh they're facing each other this week <laughs> <laughs> the uh Colts and the Bills Frank Reich seven and four straight up seven three and one against the spread Sean McDermott, seven and zero straight up, seven and zero against the spread last two preseasons. They're facing each other this week. So <laughs> I know this was not planned, but I find it quite amusing. Everybody is going to bet on the Ravens, but you've got to pay the piper. We'll talk about uh, some value there, but when you're laying north of a field goal in these totals around 31, 32, I'm I'm not one that's going to sign up for that. Uh, sometimes I think there are some lazy narratives that are out there that people just don't take a few minutes to research because another uh, betting angle that I constantly hear is, well, we've got 10 new head coaches in the NFL this year and they want to set a winning culture. So what you need to do is you need to back these new head coaches because they want to start off on the right foot. They want to show, show them who's boss. They want to get things rolling before the season gets going for real. Okay. 
Um, there are a few examples. Stefanski in his first year, he was three and zero in the preseason. Reich, I, I just referenced him. He was three and one, but in, in recent seasons, I started going over these uh, younger head coaches. There are many more examples of brand new head coaches that have been off to terrible starts. Arthur Smith zero three last year. Dan Campbell zero three last year. Nick Sirianni winless. Mike Vrabel in his first year, he was winless. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury, one and three. John Harbaugh was one and three in his first year. McDermott was one and three before he turned things around the preseason. McDaniels, nobody talks about those, but I, there are many more examples of uh, rookie head coaches that have had failings as far as uh, the result of the game straight up in the preseason. So uh, be careful with some of the stuff that you're following. Well, I remember in Sean McVay's first preseason, oh. everyone is outraged that he yeah. didn't want to play Jared Goff. Cause it's like, Oh, he was terrible during his rookie year. Don't you want to see him out there? And they, McVay's like, no, nah, I don't want guys to get hurt. And you see that kind of proliferating throughout the league. So I don't think it's an accident that you see, you've seen some younger coaches not do so well in the preseason because mm -hmm. they're probably just trying to rest. They're good players. So, we're fading these narratives or not, maybe not actively fading, but not seeking them out. Are there things you do buy into Joe in terms of things you look at uh, in terms of when, from a broader perspective with preseason games? Yeah, absolutely. And, and the uh, spreads that are North of a field goal, they make a lot of sense to me. Like you're going to have to lay a price. If you want to bet on John Harbaugh winning his 21st consecutive preseason game, they have not lost since 2015. But is he going to cover? Like there have been a couple instances over that that stretch where they have not covered the spread. So I understand why it's more uh, the Chargers north of a field goal. Okay, we we've got these Stafford issues that are lingering. Uh, one minute McVeigh saying this is abnormal. We're trying all sorts of stuff. And Stafford, oh, it's fine. We're good. We're good to go. It's, uh, also, <laughs> Vegas looked good in that first game, and then you look at the backup situation in Minnesota, that's not all that appealing. So Vegas is north of a field goal. Those grab my eye, but I'm not going to lay more than a field goal with these uh, short totals. The ones that did uh, grab my attention, let's see. We've got the Chiefs as three-and-a-half-point underdogs at the Chicago Bears. Now, <laughs> the Chicago Bears. Eberflus says he's playing his guys. He says Justin Fields is going to be out there. Okay, great. Here's the problem. Ones on the Bears are threes on other teams. You know what I mean? Like, that's what you have to pay attention to. Uh, we might get a Nathan Peterman signing. So, I mean, we've seen oh Henny God, forced really? into <laughs> forced into action in the past, and he's been just fine. One wait, of those wait, wait. narratives. Are we not getting yeah. touchdown Trevor as a backup here? What happened? Did I miss something? I, I just skipped your guy with the wild. How dare I mean, you? We, we can do that. We can. It's fine. It's, it's a homecoming. It's, it's, he's back. Whatever. Yeah, he, he better get some time because hopefully. Hopefully it's his only time on the field. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I agree with that part. I won't watch Justin Fields, yes. but yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I know. I, I, I like to needle you with the Northwestern Wildcats. It's fair. It's fair. Wait, so, uh, Joe, let me but, stop you real quick. With, yeah, with go the ahead. Bears, like the idea oh. is that Fields is going to play because he needs the reps and Mahomes isn't or is only getting whatever the coach, whatever Andy Reid's saying. Andy Reid. is that why it's minus three and a half? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the perception is that Andy Reid doesn't care about the preseason. He, like, I don't know that it's quite McVeigh, but that that's, I, I guess, I mean, I wouldn't set it at three and a half, the Bears, but I, I guess that's what it is that Eberflus is out there saying we're going to play our guys. Okay. We got Roquan Smith demanding a trade this morning, too. Like, he's probably the best player on the team. Um, I don't know that they're setting the best culture right now. So, yeah, I, I would back the Chiefs in that one. Um, another an angle that I am looking at, if we're not, if we don't want to go too crazy with the head coaches, is a, like we're kind of referencing now. You certainly want to look at these quarterback depth charts, like with Denver mm -hmm. as uh, as a two and a half point favorite against Dallas. Well, how much is Russell Wilson going to be playing? And I look at that one of those like Cincinnati too with Joe Burrow. Like if Burrow goes down, just just the drop off. I mean, it's minimum a touchdown once you go to QB two uh, and QB three, the guys that are going to get the majority of run. So um, Cincinnati is favored by two and a half against Arizona. As looking at Arizona as a dog, uh, Dallas as a dog, 
at Denver, they're getting two and a half and, and Kansas City. But again, I can't lay a big number here. Um, like, as far as these quarterback situations, Lamar's not going to play for Baltimore, but you're not that concerned if Huntley's going to get some run or Huntley. Don't get don't get too confused because we we know with Baltimore you're you're probably going to be just fine and they have depth and that's the biggest reason that they've been so successful over the years in the preseason. But yeah, Cincinnati, Denver, Tennessee, w- Woodside, and I guess Malik Willis is going to get some run. I, I think they're set up for a poor season. I don't know how much they're going to end up playing Tannehill. Uh, not a guy I'm looking to back. And if the Rams are starting with Wolford, oh boy. Um, I I understand why they're three and a half point dogs right now uh, with a head coach. It doesn't seem to care about the preseason in McVay. Very interesting. Um, so actually I do want to ask you, Joe, um, before we get on the preseason, what was your outlook on your bears for the season? Bad. <laughs> That was that was, was not a beat miss. <laughs> Real bad. Yeah, we just had um a, and I think you would you'd get this response if you talk to any of the traders at the uh legalized sports books. It's uh it, it's funny if you if you look at some of the reports. And now, I don't go too far with this because it is different at every sports book, but every book that I see that that uh puts the action out there on win totals, the most popular bets Typically, we all know that it's going to be on overs. People are looking at the predictions and, and they're going to look at things in the positive sense. That team is going to be good this year. They're going to they're going to beat things like the Lions are very popular. And once everybody starts watching Hard Knocks and Dan Campbell's against the spread la- record last year, it's probably only going to continue. But the most popular win total bet that I keep hearing is Bears under. Six and a half with a very soft schedule. And uh, the trader we were talking to the other day, he said, not only are people just piling on the bears under, which makes all the sense in the world to me, typically I would be like, okay, what are we missing here? What are they missing? Because a lot of times that steam is uh, is directed in the, in the wrong way. I, I've lived it before with bears hype. We saw it with Browns a few years ago. Um, but not only are they betting bears under win totals, they're finding other ways to bet against the bears. They're betting under two and a half division wins. They're betting number one overall pick belonging to the bears. Worst NFL record fourth place. They will definitely finish in the NFC North. People are getting creative with it and, and I'm trying to find a way to go against that, but I just don't see it on this team. If you just look at the offensive line and the wide receivers, your average NFL fan is going to say, who are these people and how did they get a vacation from the gas station they were working at to uh, take time out to work, to play for the Chicago bears. It's, it's going to be rough. The one thing I would say in the positive sense, I mentioned the soft schedule is um, if you go down the list, they are playing a lot of poor quarterbacks. The problem is a lot of these teams are, are going to be salivating when it comes to, to play in the bears. I, right. the, they're they're looking to to bottom out with the new head coach and the GM, and it certainly seems like uh, they're going to be able to accomplish that this season. Interesting. Oh, so Joe, I actually, remember the other thing I want to ask you about preseason games. So, like, take Baltimore for example. Like, are yeah. you digging in because th- like the third or the fourth stringer is probably finishing that game, right? So, yes. how much do you uh, does your analysis stretch that far? Yeah, I I would prefer to bet on first halves in first quarters in the preseason as opposed to the full games. I, I, I see a lot of the analysis that I see out there is people reference what's going to happen early on it. And that is certainly fair, but then boy, your bet is just, it's a complete coin toss yeah. as far as how it's going to be decided later on in the second half. So I, I would tell people to just click, click on the game and, and take a look at the differences that we have there in the first quarter and the first halves. One of the questions I wanted to ask you about is those totals. We talked about how low they are for this year as a reaction to the trends we discussed, you know, with preseasons, preseason, preseason unders hitting. We've seen totals react and come down. Do you think they've come down too much or are they pretty much about where they should be? What are your thoughts on the totals given how low they are for this year? Yeah, the... Um... So we've seen the Rams and the commanders go up by a full field goal. As I checked, that one was, was up to 37 uh, Seahawks and Steelers. That, that was an interesting move. And my, my 
thought on that one was it actually made a little bit of sense moving up two and a half points at 36 at last check because while the QB1, we're not talking about top 10, 12 quarterbacks here, there's actually some depth in both spots. And yeah. Seattle's trying to figure things out. Uh, early on, Geno Smith was getting run with the ones. I know on Friday, Drew Locke was getting some run. We may laugh at those situations, but later in games, they're – those are better quarterbacks than what we're used to uh, in the second half. Same thing with Pittsburgh. We think, we think uh, right now they have Pickett as their QB three, which means that the rookie is probably going to be finishing up that game, which would make a lot of sense. So that one actually, I, I understand why, it, why it was bumped up a little bit there up to 36 uh, Arizona, Cincinnati, the move down. That's that seems like a burrow reaction that oh yeah he's uh he's nowhere close and i believe that that's uh, one of the lowest totals of the week and same thing with the rams and the chargers that one moved down uh, i believe three and a half points and uh that's a stafford situation so it it's just like during the regular season it seems to be a reaction uh to quarterback situations it's trace McSorley not getting respect from the betting public yeah how, I, what, how rude what, well, something that's been in the news the last couple of days that I just started to consider is, are we going to see illegal contact yeah. throughout the preseason? I was thinking about that for week one, yeah. and I'm not sure what... Yeah, I, I, it, do you recall like in past years when they had that spike in holding calls and they had mm -hmm. the spike in like defensive uh, you know, pass interference and stuff like that? Did that occur during the preseason too? Because I don't remember. I know it happened early on in the regular season, but... I can't recall preseason. Yeah, I, I don't know about that, but I would think that they're going to be prepared to call that or sure. some of those toss. They're, it's going to be on their minds, so they're yeah. going to end up calling it a lot more. And we did see those spikes in one of those years when it was a point of emphasis, it 3 x from the yeah. previous season. And, and I wonder just the NFL's thought process on this. I, I think it was a way to increase the scoring because as we talk about it being a quarterback's league, most people don't know that scoring across the league dipped per game by two full points, almost two full points. I think it was 1.8 to be exact mm -hmm. uh, last year. And in the COVID season, it went up two full points. So I, I believe that set a record as well. So they, they clearly want to get back back to that level as uh, there are some old school people out there who complain that every rule is against the defense and they're, they're right. <laughs> I mean, like I personally, it's better than them calling offensive holding. Cause that was the worst. Like nothing was worse than the spike in offensive holding calls. I, it was miserable. Like second and 20. I want no business with that. Yeah. So as long as it's not that, I don't care. Like, you know, I'll react to it, but I don't care. I'm not going to get mad about it or anything. As long as it's not offensive holding. I will be okay. That is Joe Ostrowski. Check him out on Twitter. Again, it's simple. At Joe Ostrowski. Check him out on BetQL Daily and 670 the score as well. Joe, we appreciate the time. Good luck to you in week one of the preseason. Good luck to you with the early parts of the NFL season two. And we'll talk to you again soon, hopefully. Thank you, guys. Same to you. Jim, uh, love to see the five days a week. They're, they're working you hard over there. They certainly are, but it's a, it's a fun time to talk. We appreciate it, Joe. We'll talk to Thanks, you Joe. later. So that's again, Joe Ostrowski. You can find him. I put a link to the BetQL daily podcast version in the show notes up on numberfire.com as well. So feel free to check that out wherever you get your podcast to find uh, Joe, Joe, and Aaron to get all their thoughts there. And Ed, I like, I wish I could bet preseason because it seems like it's kind of fun to get that sweat. And it's just so tough when I'm, like Joe was talking about, we're doing five days a week. If I'm focused on baseball, if I'm focused on golf, NASCAR, yeah. stuff like that, it's hard to find time to get the information. So for me, I think that's my my biggest roadblock is finding time to get the necessary information to be good at. Because I don't want to bet if I'm going to be bad at. Like I don't, I, right. I'm not trying to lose money here. Of course, I have some mixed feelings about it too. When I was in Las Vegas last week, Chris Andrews, the the, the sports book director at South Point, was like. I hate the NFL preseason <laughs> week one come as fast as, as you possibly can. Right. So that will certainly suggest that there there's value on these games. Um, but on the other hand, like August is kind of my busiest month in terms right. of work and getting everything ready for the site and working on the podcast and everything like that. Um, I think it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of what you can get obsessed about, right? It's yeah. definitely information is part of the game. And I, over the last few years, um, 
I mean, I, I, I found that I really like that aspect of betting in terms of NFL draft. Yeah, because you, you've been gone pretty hard at the draft both yeah. the last few years. I mean, it's fun. I mean, at, at first it was just like, all right, this is a good way to keep up with what's going on right. during that time of year. And now it's right. kind of like, oh, this is this is pretty fun. And yeah. to the point where like I'm I'm just sick to myself that I decided not to bet the NBA draft yeah. this year because I was on vacation. And like the whole, you know, like whenever there's question on that or whenever there's question about a pick, just – take take the long odds on on whoever like is in contention which would have worked out so wonderfully for Banchero and um like the entire narrative that that he's like a, a low ceiling player that was coming out the week before the draft just was so mind num mind numbingly dumb right like you could have really taken advantage of that mm -hmm. um so anyways yeah i mean i think you know, you got you got to bet what you are passionate about. You know, getting the information for, and you know, I mean, for some people that might, you know, if you're if if you're listening to this and and you don't bet baseball or golf, and, exactly, and you really need something, and 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 August is a little slow otherwise, and you want to get away from your family on the beach vacation a little bit, then NFL preseason sounds great. Yeah, it just doesn't kind of work with my life as well, and it sounds like it's the same for you. Oh, I think it goes back to what you said. You know, you talked about Chris Andrews not liking preseason, and that's the same justification you used for betting the draft was because you knew oh, yeah. that bookmakers were good. miserable, yeah. and that's an indicator to us that we can have an edge. Yeah. It, so, like, if you, like I said, like you said, Ed, are not betting baseball or not doing these other things, and you got time, do it. Like, go for it. Like, there's there's money to be had. If they are not having a good time with it, that means you probably can. So uh, I'm glad we have Joe on today because Joe is very plugged into this stuff. He knows what he's doing. He understands he's been doing this for a very long time. So he knows what's bull and what's not. And I think that's why it's fun to talk to guys like Joe to get their perspective and kind of pick his brain on things like that. But uh, appreciate Joe as always and looking forward to having him on once again in the future. Ed, you've been hard at work. Over at the Power Rank, uh, getting ready. I think we're going to have some college football talk in the show next week. It sounds yeah. like uh, we're on track for that, right? Absolutely. I've, I've spent a bunch of my week uh, getting all my college football stuff together. And uh, it's only Tuesday. And I'm, I guess I'm happy to report that things are going well on uh, that side of things. Definitely a bunch of that will appear in 7 Nuggets Saturday. So check out my newsletter at uh, thepowerrank.com. And then also working on uh, starting a Patreon for the Football Analytics Show, my podcast. So that's something I've been working on this week as well. Um, yeah, so if you never checked out the Football Analytics Show, I put a lot of work into it. I'm, I'm proud of what it's become. So uh, go check that out. The most recent episode as of right now was JJ Zacharyson, uh, someone you guys have all heard of. Oh, yeah. Uh, expert in terms of NFL player projections and, and fantasy football. Um, so, yeah, between those two things, it's been a busy week. Yeah, and the Patreon is not up yet, but when it is up, where can people find details on that? Will it just be on the Power Rank? Will there be a link to the Patreon there or on your Twitter? What do you recommend as far as people who may be interested in the Patreon? Where can they go once it is available? Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you've never listened to my podcast, I, I don't really think that you're going to be uh, too interested in supporting me quite yet, but hopefully you'll come on and listen to a couple episodes um basically it's going to go down this weekend on sunday mm -hmm. uh i'm, I'm going to open up around sunday at noon eastern and the idea is to to give pe the first 20 people who sign up a special bonus um so yeah catch an episode i'll talk about that on the episode uh well i mean i'm talking about it now um, yeah so it, it'll launch on sunday perfect and uh yeah we'll go from there see how it goes Fantastic. Well, check out the podcast and get uh, a sneak peek at it by searching for the Football Analytics Show wherever you get your podcasts. You can find Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank uh, and at thepowerrank.com as well. I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. We are back once again tomorrow breaking down MLB for the Thursday slates. If you want to hear some money lines, some strikeout props, and potentially some home run talk as well. Just uh, subscribe to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts and check out the FanDuel YouTube page where all these podcasts are going up daily if you want to see it in video version as well. Big thank you once again to Joe Ostrowski for breaking down NFL Week 1 preseason. It's always a light to talk to him. It's always a light to talk to all of you. Good luck with your preseason bets. Good luck with your baseball bets for today, too. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 